we mentioned this term before. We actually said fodder, and I don't believe that NPCs should just be fodder for your murder hobo party. And I feel like it cheapens the game. And I also feel like it takes away from your story and from your world. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like NPCs have to have, they're, they're supposed to be real people or real, you know, like they, they should have a background. And now I'm not saying that you have to sit there and you have to write out a background for all these people. But if you're going to have somebody like explicitly dealing with your party, like somebody comes running through the woods yelling, help, help, help for the party. You should have some idea of who's this, who this person is, mm-hmm. you know, what, what are their motivations, things like that. What do they really care about? Neil, what you were saying before, you were talking about how, you know, maybe the NPC doesn't have, you know, they don't have the resources or, or they want to solve one part, but not the overarching theme of what's going on. And I feel like that is also because of, like, if, if I could use an example from the game that we're playing now, like, your party, the party you guys are in, has continually traveled through the countryside and they've been to all these different cities and met all these different people and they've picked up on the patterns. They've seen the things that are happening. Whereas Mungo Johnson from Two Forks, uh, the little little farming village, you know, he, he doesn't know anything outside of, of his, his farm, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So they could still have a role to play. They could still be very much a part of your story, but they don't necessarily see the whole picture. You know, they're a puzzle piece, but they don't see the whole picture. Yeah. That's and a, I feel like that's, that's a good way to think about it. I feel like that's important is make your NPCs have value, you know, make them have an existence and and give them some sort of, you know, make them I I feel like the more in depth, the more real you make them the more amazing your world becomes you know oh yeah because it's it, and, you know it's just kind of lame when it's like yeah every npc you meet is a jerk or every npc you meet just loves you oh, or, or, or they just don't trust you no matter what and every right. village you go to and it's like man i'm you know level 15 like y'all should know who i am or have heard of me or something by now yeah yeah you would you would at least know that i'm you know a magic user or i'm yeah. like a fearsome warrior or i'm a good you know i i protect every village i've gone to and why don't you why haven't you heard of me yet you know or i've been to this village three times and you bet a dick every time <laughs> like yeah, yeah i helped out this village and yeah. done a couple of things but yet I, think, I still I still well, can't get a question answered. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I think that's where a lot of DMs lose it because they keep using the same things that you see in movies and it's like sure first couple of levels traveling around from village to village people may just like blow you off like ah oh, you're just like the rest of us. But once you start doing a lot of things, they should have heard of you. They may not know it's you. But yeah. also your gear is going to start to be a little bit different. If you, you know, have been in a lot of battles, your armor is going to be dented up, scratch. You know, it's going to look like you're a battle-hardened warrior. So I highly doubt that, you know, the Mungo, to use Cody's example, is going to come up to you and try and start a fight when you're level six and you have a magical sword that can cleave his head off, you know? Yes, and, and <laughs> I feel like that's a, that's a great point, Frank, because, you know, if if I picture like a small little hamlet, like a small little farming hamlet, you know, people's implements that they have to protect themselves are probably farm tools, axes, mm-hmm. maybe spears, maybe bows for hunting, things like that. Yeah. If you show up in magical dwarven plate with like a flaming sword, yeah. you know, a Pegasus. The, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the average person isn't like they could be distrustful of you because they could be like, you have magic. You have all this crazy stuff that is outside of my realm of, you know, outside of my little pond, <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. um, that's like that fear of the unknown, you know, or they could just immediately be like, wow, this this is somebody that could help us. You know, this is somebody that we could perhaps hire, you know? Yep. Especially when, you know, you have a wizard or somebody doing some crazy stuff. Or, you know, like I said, you have a Pegasus, something like that, that people are going to say, all right, we can trust them. Let's go. Let's let's get their help. Let's do this stuff. And they're just going to probably approach at that point. Like, they're going to, you know, hey, we, you know, who are you? I'm blah, blah, blah from, you know, et cetera. It's- 